Um, let's go over what happened this Sunday and Monday. No, I think it's all Sunday games, right? Uh, Nicole, you first. You, uh, what team did you play? Uh, what, what went down, bud? I guess there's this place <laughs> called Atlanta. Wow, where is this place? Vision. Uh, but it was in our home, okay, our dome. Uh, we played dome. the Atlanta mm-hmm. Falcons, and we beat you 18-21. Yeah, uh, too close of a game that I would have liked, preferably. However, there's been news. Taysen Hill, what a star. Um, mm-hmm. I do have to give it to him uh, out of the game. He's the only player in NFL history to have scored 10 touchdowns as a passer, receiver, and running uh, runner, including the playoffs. So no one else has ever done that since the league merger in 1966. Nice. Uh, critical fumble came in the fourth uh, with two, two, two minutes left in the game. There was a fourth and five-yard attempt where Ritter throws to London, and London loses it. Uh, Justin Evan popped it out, and Bradley uh, Rob Ruby took it away. So yeah, um, kind of touch on that too. Um, yeah, it was an unfortunate Sunday for sure. Um, there is there was a lot of good things that I saw out of it. I'm gonna be honest with you. From comparable, I guess weeks, um, there was things that I liked. Um, I, I do know I was hoping that Ritter was gonna have something more of like the Tom Brady effect, where he was just gonna come in and just be that star. But he mm-hmm. very much looked like a rookie. But that's okay. That's fine because there are some pluses to this game. Um, I saw Ritter throw the ball, and he threw the ball a lot more than what Mariota threw. So I, I will say that's a little bit of a plus. Um, is he the guy? It's a little bit too early to be determined. But at the very same time, I do think that Arthur Smith now is looking a little bit like he's less on the hot seat. And, uh, you know, at, at least we can see what the quarterback is going to do and if we are going to go with a quarterback in the next draft or not. So I am I am happy about that. But, no, you guys were the better team. And, uh, yeah, Drake London, man. Like, mm-hmm. the guy <laughs> – I love him. Don't get me wrong. I love him. But there's been two games now where he's given up a crucial ball. And, uh, I, again, I'm not it's, – it's a rookie. It's And, you know, it's his first year, sure. But you can't be doing that, man. Like, you, <laughs> not in games that close. So, uh, kudos to you. The Saints were the better team this week. And, uh, you know, you guys keep fighting along. I'll see you next mm-hmm. year. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> honestly. <Yes. laughs> But, yeah, I, I guess uh, let, let's move on from that because I don't need to hear any more of that. But uh, mm-hmm. let's talk about the Buccaneers. I need to feel a little bit better. It's been a great one. I'm going to just drop that. Right. <laughs> what, do, what, do you want, what do you want to hear, buddy? Uh, I just want to hear how you're uh, – give me the analysis of what went down on the Sunday when uh, you guys had a very, very favorable lead. And, hey, if I'm – mistake me – Tom Brady doesn't give up leads like that, correct? No. Nope. Oh, Tom, Tom, Tom Brady doesn't do this. Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't do this at all. You know who does do this though, who? respectively, all who? the time throughout that- history? It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> this is like what did I say? Like last week or the week before? This is looking like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of old, where we have a lot of talent, we just don't know what the lip to do with it. And uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, not happy that we actually came out the gun looking good. Um, but then they, it, it, I don't know if it is Tom Brady at this point. I don't know if it's a stale offense. I don't know if it's, um, I just don't know if it's the, the, the drive to want to win anymore. But uh, these guys seem content of, and I mean this in all respect to the people we're talking about in the division here. The Panthers fans got a, like a Washington Commanders thing on it. He's lost. Don't worry about him. <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like they're being given this division, whether we get six wins, seven wins, eight wins, or nine wins, yeah. it, this division is ours, and they are like they're playing like it, and I don't mm-hmm. like. It. And there needs to be change. I know that we're not going to change from Todd Bowles. That's for a fact, because everybody just loves his play calling. And yeah, <laughs> Byron Leftwich is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Like, oh, Oops, I got a question for you. Actually, yeah. with that being said. Just kind of seeing how the team's going, and now we can kind of say that, you know, even if the Bucs do win the division, which is still a possibility for anybody here, really, right? Mm-hmm. But um, there's a good chance that, you know, you guys probably would get, or all of us, I'm not even just speak about the Buccaneers, we're all probably going to get knocked out the first round of the playoffs. 
mm -hmm. pretty likely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just going to be honest here. Um, with how much, I guess, how do I word this? Um, I guess, aged talent that you brought into the Buccaneers. Do you think potentially, especially with where you guys are right now, and you do have some young linesmen, that it is potentially a good retooling season next season, and you just kind of trade for what you can and get some younger and more favorable talent, especially for the O-line? So you're not wrong because, yes. Mm -hmm. Now on the flip side of it too, I said this when Tom Brady came in, and I still hold true to it. I just think there's a bit of a hangover, and I'm not talking Super Bowl, and I'm not talking anything like that. I think there's just a hangover of having a certain mentality maybe in the building that's kind of controlling things. And, again, don't know if that's Brady, don't know if that's Bowles, and don't know if that's Byron. But it could be a retooling season if, for some odd reason, someone like Aaron Rodgers was available. Yeah. Um, because the team is built – for quarterbacks like that. Um, and then I only say that because we've proven it. Tom Brady came in in one year during COVID, a lot of restrictions. The guy had to get fined for, you know, practicing with his guys in a park um, mm. and trying to figure out a, a brand new play system that the guy has never ran before. And he literally came out right out of the gun and he won a Super Bowl. Yeah. And we've been trying to replicate that ever since. Doesn't and happen I, often. And no, and it's I don't think it's gonna happen with Brady. I think if we get to the playoffs this year, we could have a run like Washington gave us in the Super mm -hmm. Bowl year, where it was a team that was under 500 and they came out of nowhere and everyone's like, Oh shit, what's going on? Yeah. So it would be retooling if it was Aaron Rodgers or maybe even like a Lamar Jackson. If we were to get a quarterback of those type of calibers, I could see it being a retooling. If it's not yeah. any of those whatsoever, and we have to either go with Trask or a quarterback in the draft, then we might as well start trading assets and give Chris Godwin a brand new home and get a couple of first rounders for him. Mm. No, there, there. Mm. But uh, on the plus side, I guess, uh, Mr. Mr. Spencer, the uh, the dual, I guess, franchise fan. How's it going, man? What's Let's go. Going? Beautiful. Let's go. Let's we're gonna go take. On. We're gonna take command of the South. Let's All right. <laughs> I think. Low Bring key, it all together. I think the Panthers are going to win it. I actually low key do think that right now. Well, we're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful um, playing against the Steelers. Shout out to them, Sydney Swinton. Up, they wiped their whole division, eh? They wiped their hey. whole division. Um. <laughs> hey, they're doing whatever they can do. They they got it done. And look, I, I got to be quite honest with you. This game came down to we couldn't stop the run. Najee Harris was gashing us so left and right. Warren, their backup number 30, was killing us in the run game and out of the backfield uh receiving. I mean, we just couldn't stop it, man. We like you know, we were kind of kind of getting towards uh Trubisky, but they were just running on us left and right. Sam Darnold didn't look bad, had over 220 yards, you know. I mean, looked a lot better than I thought he was gonna look, you know, and then coming off the you know, you got the win from a week ago. So hey, shout out to what they're trying to do, but at the end of the day. We can't have everything fall on the shoulders of our defense and Sam Darnold. Our running game was absent, one hundred percent. Like we didn't need, we didn't even have thirty yards on the ground this game. Mm -hmm. Like we are, everybody knows us for a, a being a rushing team. When Chris McCaffrey is here, and then now we got Chuba and Dante Foreman. I mean, come on, how many times have we talked about that earlier in the year, and we didn't even get like oh, we didn't even get twenty five yards on the ground. That's crazy between three people. That's that's unacceptable. Wow. So. It's one thing to be like, yeah, yo, we're a playoff team, but no team can be a playoff team only running for, you know, for like under 30 yards. So it's it's ridiculous. Hey, right now, the way we are, thankfully, uh, you know, Atlanta lost and Tampa Bay lost, so we're somewhat still in the hunt. But oh, then yeah. the Saints moved up. So it, everything, we're, we're technically kind of in the driver's seat because we got to play the Saints and we got to play um, the Buccaneers. Yeah, and we play the Lions, so we can easily we knock them out, and then potentially win the two divisional games. We could do it, but uh, we got to do better than that. I'll tell you that much. I feel that, man. And you know what? Honestly, funny enough, and Foops, you can attest to this. Everybody in multiple, multiple podcasts, I said, do not sleep on the Lions because they might squeak a wild card spot. I said it multiple times, <laughs> and that might come true. And actually, I believe if I said correctly, even. I said they were going to clinch the last wild card spot too. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. 
and that very likely might come true. So, which like, is fun, which is funny too, because I also called the Vikings getting into the playoffs, and I got absolutely laughed at yeah. at the beginning of the season for that. And I was like, yeah. come on. Yo, I but, Detroit, I wasn't ooh. hopping on that train just for Alex. I'm like, listen, I'll let Alex enjoy this a little bit first. He denied it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it, but yo, but Foobs, dude, yeah. nobody, and I mean nobody, in August and, and July was talking anything about the Giants except for you. Yeah, You said yeah, they were going to yep. be competitive, and hey, as somebody that's just lost and tied to them, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I, oh, my God. Honestly, like, their their roster, they were the, built the same as Cleveland's, in my opinion. Like, when it came to that defense, too, the offensive line was not Swiss cheese, but just good enough kind of thing right. where they had the guys in place. And I just, honestly, yeah, it, it, it's it's nice when you can bet on these things and be right. You call it now and you can start yeah. picking these out, right? But I was so wrong. Let's be completely – so wrong about the Eagles. I, oh, I was one no, of the I only people – I didn't see that. I was one hold of the on. only Quickly. people who was not on the Eagles bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah. With I the Eagles, I'm yeah. telling you right now, I think, I still think, it's just, it's history is proven. I still think they fall off in the playoffs. I don't know, man. I got, I had, that feeling has not left me. I don't mm. know who's going to do it necessarily, but I, I don't, I think they lose in the playoffs, man. I'm just, mm. I'm telling you. It's just, they're going to over, they're going to underestimate a team. And they're gonna fall off, and it's gonna be like, why didn't I not bet money on this game? I don't know. know. <laughs> I think they could take it. I think they could, but yeah, just, the history, the man. The Steelers had a similar season, and that's my issue. Is the Steelers mm. win? I think eleven and zero. Yeah, and who who they lose to? Washington. Yeah. Let's crazy. go, baby. <laughs> take the bet. Listen, this doesn't happen often. Like I'm telling you right now, like it's not like I'll use the NHL for an example in this scenario. The Colorado Avalanche last season dominated the whole season and won the playoffs. Yep. Do you know how unsaid that is? That does not happen often in sports. Like, that doesn't happen often in NFL. That doesn't happen often in NHL. It's very seldom that those teams go and just win it all out. Usually it's pretty close, but the Eagles, I don't know. Unless history just, you know, breaks, um, I'm not sold. I don't know who's going to win it. I said the Bills from the beginning of the season, so I'm not going to change my mind on that. But... Jeez. I'm but supposed yeah. to be going for Cowboys. No, we don't do that. No. Yes. Don't do that here. No. no. I said to no. my dad, no. maybe 49ers uh, or Cowboys. And and uh, my brother's like, there's only one answer. No. Oh, okay. no. Okay, no, no. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is way different than we thought. <laughs> we all thought the same thing until she said brother. And then right. we were like, oh, okay. okay right, okay. right. It's not <laughs> not Ash. Right. It's not who we thought. That <laughs> okay. Danae and Ash like bring her onto a stream yard to do a show, and yes. he's like, "Hey, like, when are we going live? We're not. We're here to talk about the Dallas fucking Cowboys. Right. Cowboys. Hey. My apologies. My apologies. The Niners. <laughs> the Niners, though. Honestly, this is my thing with the Niners. I think the Niners might go to the Super Bowl. But hear me out. The one thing that Kyle Shanahan does not know how to do is finish. He doesn't know how to finish. He plays a good edging game. He edges absolutely. The guy can't finish though. He can't do it. He tries. He tries to extend it too much, and I yeah. and I a thousand no. percent agree. He's like, I need to make sure this the the enemy is dead essentially. Yeah. Like they need to go down by my count. It's like no, let mm. the game do it. That's how right. everybody does it. Don't change exactly. the formula. Yeah. No. Exactly. Absolutely. But thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.